Welcome to ATV TV. I'm Darren Dance here with my old mate, Brian Johnson, who's just returned from a big weekend at the Golden Slipper. Brian, how was it? Ended up a bit weary at the end, Darren. Get weary. Especially at the last race, after we best bit last week, got up and Nate Bennett got a winner at 10 to 1. I thought you tipped uh, Earthquake, Brian. Only if, it, only if it was dry, Darren. Only if it was dry. Well, you probably noticed here we're in uh, the, the hut at the thousand metre mark of the Ballarat Synthetic Track. This is the place where it all happens on fast work mornings. This is the office of Mr Weir and Mr Rogers who do all the clocking and timing of this beautiful uphill track at Ballarat. And this is why I think Darren Weir is getting so many winners, Brian, because they work in a straight line up this hill. And as you just found out, it's, um, it's all plasticine as your water it is. It is. And um, it's very forgiving on the feet. And it's all electronically timed, Brian, so you know exactly what section of your horses are working. And I, I guess that when you talk to the riders and they say it did it easy and it's run up in 46, you can probably walk away and say, well, I think I can go to Melbourne and win a race. And I think it must certainly help you place your horses. I know, Darren, yeah, you can actually see from how steep the rise is there. And goes up a long way and then we're actually you know, the leading Victoria trainer. This is where it all happens now. Yeah, well I was actually going to film you running up that bit of the hill there for 100 metres, but then I realised we can only make this about 12 minutes. Exactly, it's exactly right time. Right. I mean, I haven't got a wide lens either, so... No, and I know you're about as slow as the Collingwood midfield, Brian, so I go to Cats, that was pretty exciting, wasn't it? Great game, Darren, if you, if you like turnovers. Turnovers? Yeah. Uh, look, let's go quickly through the runners. We had plenty of them last week, just the one winner today. But um, we went to Warnable last Thursday with Listo Gatano first up, nothing expected. Uh, Red midfield, he'll improve hopefully when he gets a bit further. Your horse, Brian, Miss Adelaide, she jumped out, led, um, travelled to the corner and then just found nothing in the straight. And uh, we've chosen to retire her. And I just noticed her half brothers running in the Doncaster on Saturday, El Rocco, so that's the highs and lows of racing, isn't it? It is. Friday we went to Geelong and we had already like a two-year-old go around at about 40 to 1. I can't, what, I can't believe it, I think 750 a place. Unbelievable. What a sight. Flew, just flew it did and um, ran into a howling gale win and at 1107 metres, I think that was that 7 metres and the gale force win stopped her winning at about $35 but she ran third and paid 750 a place. And she'll go to Warnable now over a thousand in the Phillies Vobus Gold Race Brian worth about 80 grand. She'll be very hard to beat down there. On Saturday we went to Darwin and watched old Romeo go around and he ran fourth Brian and was disappointing pulled up with an issue in his leg and he's another one that's been retired so there's a few um, heading to the retirement paddock this week. Today we had three runners, uh, two at Sandown and one at Warwick Farm. Abasso was a big win at Warwick Farm for the Chris Waller trained Abasso, first win, finally broke through. Uh, expensive in Costa Colt Brian, um, he ran well today. He did, he's got a great bunch of owners in this horse too and I was really pleased for, for them when he won the race. He, he, just, he just raced the back of the field and then when Nash let him go he just ran him up in a bit with a couple of seconds and the race was over. And plenty of wins in store for this horse once he gets a bit of experience. Pretty wet and cold here at Ballarat and um, we're just drinking this coffee here because um, it's the only thing we can do to warm up and stop yeah. ourselves shivering. Well, it's not to get weary to get a probably bit of rain in the coffee, I think, too, when we talk to him now. Yeah, weary, come on. Get some Macona, this, uh, I don't know what this is, but it's pretty ordinary, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, then down to Sandown, we had Princess Hussey go around in race three. Dean Yendall, not one of your best rides, Dean. Um, just loomed up, and um, if he had to use the whip a little bit more vigorously, she might have run third. But, um, look, well beaten by the, the, the eventual winner. It was a class above one by four or five lengths, but she was honest, and... I think back to the country in her right race, she'll be winning next start. And then the Peter Moody trained Mumbai is second up. Uh, look, run seventh or second last, whichever way you want to look at it. But she was on the inside and they, they all came down the centre of the track and um, the inside horses didn't finish off. They, they said she was a bit disappointed, but I didn't think the inside was a place to be. And I think Mumbai is second up right through her career of form has been pretty ordinary. I do think she's too bad. She only really finished with four lengths from him. And I think you're fine to give her another run and she'll probably be pleased to her fourth run. I want to say good day to Claire who tells me that she watches ATV TV Brian every Friday night over a bottle of red after work and she finds you very hilarious. Right, thank, thanks. It's nice to know Claire. Hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. She thinks you're funny, right? Uh, so good day Claire. She's in um, Already Like Her and she's, uh, she's having a good time with that horse. 
Uh, plenty of like it or you like it. Anyway, let's have a quick look forward, Brian. Tomorrow we're going to travel up to Seymour and watch Intravenous play with its little sister. One star, one win. Can she make it two in a row? Uh, it's got to be a big chance up at Seymour, I think, Darren. And a little half sister's race on Saturday, so it could be a little uh, double for the bloodline mare. And it'd be great to see because a lot of the owners are in both horses, Clayton and Intravenous. And she was exciting first win. And, uh, expect her to go pretty close. I'll tell you a little secret, Brian. We don't want to tell too many people, but we've actually secured the next little sister out of Bloodline, so Platelet's little sister. Looks already. Yeah, we've secured her and uh, she'll be down at our place in August and um, probably come October we'll be looking for some people to race her with us. She's by Authorised. Oh, nice. nice. So there you go. But Intravenous Barry 2 tomorrow, lead all the way and hopefully bring it up to a fit and two on a wet track. Head down to Geelong on Friday and watch Chloe Anna. Second up at Geelong. Uh, her run first up was pretty good. She's a middle distance staying type filly, and um, I think she'll run a forward race at Geelong, Brian. She's nice on a filly, Chloe, you know, and once again, a bit more racing, and she's probably going to improve as she gets older. Third or fourth up, Brian, I think. And then Caulfield, two runners in one race. Shiny Buttons and Tayu. One's drawn 16, one's drawn 18. They'll come in about five slots with the emergencies, but um, we have to go this way because Shiny Buttons are sort of heading to it's the Warnable Cup and I'll tell you I'm not really sure where he's heading, he's just winning as he likes at the moment but um, he certainly um, performed better than all expectations so far but um, we have to run him on um, Saturday against each other and um, what are your thoughts of the two? I probably tell you he's in form at the moment, so I probably lean towards Tyler at the moment, he's got the ability to either lead or race on the pace and Shawnee Buttons is probably not far away, I probably lean towards Tyler in form. And then I'll be in Adelaide, I'll go over and watch Platelet running the Irwin Stakes, Brian. Now you've done the form and you've done the weights and you think she's a bit of a moral. I would make her about five kilos better than the next horse, Darren, just on basic weights alone on handicapping. And if you take other things into a, into a equation, she should be really odds on. Odds but on? If a moment of change is in this race, it'd be odds on. Mm. So there's no reason, if Platelet's in the black, get on. Get on. Well, and then uh, it's a bit, we're a bit confused about what else happens on Saturday and Sunday at this stage, Brian. We've got horses in it for Bendigo on Saturday and Terang on Sunday, being Lethal, Arrow and Gen Y. I'm pretty sure Lethal Arrow will go to Bendigo for the Elmore Cup, which will be right up to his ears. Uh, Gen Y is also in it there, but is also in it for uh, Terang. I've got a feeling she might end up at Terang. And also at Terang on Sunday, we've got nominations for Listo Gitano, Lucky on Barefoot, and a little two-year-old called Flying Paris who tried up pretty good on Tuesday morning, trained by Matty Williams. Yeah, nice little top this one. Can you tell us a bit more now? Uh, no, I can't. All right, well, keep an eye out for Flying Paris. Yeah, she goes well, and um, I'm pretty well tempted. Um, I'm tempted to make it my get-on, but if you're going to steal intravenous and platelet, I might have to go with Tayu and Flying Paris as my best bets for the week. I like Insightful, Brian. <laughs> oh. Well, Brian, um, it's been a week since our new website went live, and um, many of you now would have received your um, emailed audio reports pre and post race from us. So, hopefully, you're all getting those on your horses that are racing. And if you're not, you need to email Shona to make sure that um, everything's set up with your email and your access code. So, just shoot Shona an email to make sure you're getting all that data, the new site's going well. We've still got a few teething issues, but I think it's a, a big improvement, Brian, on where we've been. Yeah, I find the pre-race reports excellent, Darren, especially had a horse trial on Tuesday at camp, and then shut out the trial to get an audio message to say the horses trial well and won the trial, so rather than having to wait till later in the night, so I found that really good. So we won't tell anyone that uh, that horse was the star of yours on Tuesday, Brian, East Star, we'll keep that between ourselves. Yeah, well, when we mention the name, Darren, no names. No names of East Star, we just won't talk yeah. about East Star at all. Um, earlier today, um, you caught up with Ryan Stanaway, the marketing manager of the Ballarat Turf Club, and spoke about the reopening of Ballarat Track. I did, Darren, it's going to be an exciting day, and here's what Ryan had to say. I'm here with Ryan Stanaway, the marketing manager of Ballarat Turf Club, and we're only six weeks away or so from the reopening of the course, Ryan, and what can you tell us? Well, BJ, we're uh, on track for a return on the 1st of June. Sunday the 1st of June is going to be our first official race day. And we've also got a return to racing program, so we'll start having ho uh, horses go over the course proper uh, with some slow gallops as of next week and build up to uh, jump outs by the end of the month and then uh, 
official trials mid-May and then we'll be ready to go 1st of June. So what's happening on 1st of June then when the course reopens, Ryan? Well, BJ, we're hoping to have a big day. It's going to be our uh, big great day in, we're calling it. So we're hoping to, uh, with, with some approval, we're hoping to get about 30 tonne of snow put on the back lawn and turn it into a winter wonderland. So it's going to be a great day for the kids and families to come out here and uh, hopefully welcome back racing at Ballarat. Another good initiative, especially after Phantom Race Day, which I believe was very successful. Yeah, it was. We had, a, we had a very good day, thanks to ATB for their support. We had a good turnout and uh, everyone enjoyed a good lunch and a bit of a return from the punters club, which was a rarity. Obviously Lachlan wasn't involved? No, we sacked him halfway through, oh. so we took control and always got a back on shot. Always a chance, track. if Lachlan's not on the punters club, there's always a chance of getting some money back, so well, <laughs> well done with that. Well, thanks for your time, Ryan. Thanks, Bert. Ballarat's one of the most progressive clubs in the state, so good to see you bringing Winter Wonderland in on June the 1st. Should be thanks good. Thanks very much. Well, Brian, that was very exciting, wasn't it? It was. Winter Wonderland in Ballarat, who would have thought? Hey, you could be frosty the snowman. I could, Darren, but uh, they probably won't find a suit for me. Big enough? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to actually have a bit of a day there for ATV on the 1st of June to support the Back to Ballarat racing. Um, so we'll be having a morning at Darren Weir's at his stable. So pencil in June 1st, Sunday, June 1st. It's going to be wet, it's going to be cold, what else do you want to do but come to Ballarat and have a look at your horse and then we'll go up to the Ballarat Turf Club in the committee room and we'll have roast lunch Brian. Oh, it, sounds, it sounds exciting there. Yeah. And then I think we should have a bit of a, a um, little activity out on the snow. Maybe we can have a tobogganing competition and see if we can all slide down the hill. Yeah, we can get some of our owners involved, we'll get Brian Fellows, we'll try and get Phil Britton now from Darwin. Well, I reckon there's a few there that might be all right. Um, I think some of the regulars from ATB, you know, Nathan Bennett, he might be, he might make a good snowman. Maybe we could get Nathan up to do the punters club. Well, actually, there you go, Nathan. Put the, um, put the pressure on him. We're trying to get Nathan, our tipping competition guru, to um, actually supply a weekly tip. So we might have the best bet of the week from Nathan Bennett this week, and maybe we can have the runner-up from uh, Wes Martin. Now also you wanted to know about some of the international horses that are getting close to racing. Uh, they're all getting ready for the summer over in the UK and a lot of them will kick off late April in May. And Kalini's a horse that we've sent back over there and he's in great order. And Brian, um, whilst you're in Dubai, you had a chat to Marco Body? I did, Darren, and this is what Marco had to say. Okay, I'm here with Marco Body for the Maidan Racecourse in Dubai. Kalini, Marco, can you tell us how he's travelling? Yeah, another exciting horse and um, he's been absolutely fine since he arrived. He's a strong colt and um, uh, really, really pleased the way he's coming along. And um, where uh, again we, we haven't finalised a plan for him in the spring, but um, I presume it would be over a mile and a half, a mile and six, and he stays well. Um, so at this stage, uh, I'm really happy with his condition. And, um, we should, be, we should see him on the track in the next uh, three, four weeks. Oh, that's great news for his owners. Have you, have you got a racing target look in the immediate future? Well, I, I think we, we might start in at least a race, but as I said, I know we, we haven't pinned down which race yet, but um, that's probably starting at least a race. It's rated uh, over 100, so and then uh, we just um, see where we go from there. Okay, well, thanks so much for your time, Marco. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And Good luck today with Mount Athos. Thank you very much, sir. No wow, that's yeah. exciting. Wow, well, well, that is exciting. Oh, that just makes me feel warm all over. Yeah, well, you heard it here first, eh? Yeah? yeah, he's doing a great job, Marco, and um, we look forward to those international horses kicking off. Well, that's a wrap for ATV TV this week at Ballarat at the Turf Club in the big office of Dee Weir and Jeremy Rogers. And uh, boys, We've really enjoyed your hospitality, not so much your coffee. I'm Darren Vance, he's Brian Johnson. Go the Hawks! Hope you get enough horses at both tracks. But, and on Saturday you had the... Um, silly man. Kick, kick silly. back. Kick back. <laughs> <laughs> Why ATV? Why not? <laughs>